Perry's murder gang became so Can legendary LeBron do that? on the streets of D.C. LeBron can't do none of that shit. And some gangsters LeBron talking about he can beat Michael Jordan or slam as the Michael Jordan of murder. The fuck out of here. And when Wayne's little brother was asked about his legendary status, he was quoted as shitty, saying, um, Wayne is as silent as the wind and as deadly as fire. But eventually, Wayne would be locked up once again and the city could breathe again. All the gangsters and the drug dealers can move around a little bit more free, knowing Wayne ain't lurking in the shadows. But a series of events would occur that would change Wayne Perry's life forever. When Albert Martinez, AKA Alpo, came into his life. Now, exactly how they met, there's two sides to the story. Wayne Perry claims that one night he was out and a man by the name of Shorty Pop, who he was close to, introduced Alpo to him. But Wayne said he wanted to kill Alpo because a female that he was dealing with told him that Alpo said he was gonna put a hit out on Wayne. And Shorty Pop had to talk him out of it and Alpo had to talk to him and tell him that it wasn't true. And allegedly, Shorty Pop went back and killed that woman for, that's Wayne's version. Alpo's version is a little different. According to Alpo, Wayne was still locked up and his bond was only $10,000, but nobody would put the money up because he had the streets of DC and absolute fear. But Alpo saw the long game. So Alpo put up the money to set Wayne free. Once again, unleashing him on the streets of DC. Now, Alpo had already been in the city trying to make some moves, move his work, but he was running into a lot of resistance. DC, they didn't play too well with out of towners, especially one with a reputation like Alpo's. But it was a lot of strong dudes in the city and Alpo case. just didn't have the muscle. So he would get extorted, robbed on a pretty consistent basis, but he was still getting money and he would try to work with the dudes in the city, but they just wasn't dealing with him for real. And eventually he got set up and some dudes tried to shoot and kill him during a drug deal. When I say what I've been after, because a lot of people were starting to talk about, well, we got to get rid of the kid Pope because he getting too much money and he's not even from here. I did hear you got shot. I got shot because they was trying to kidnap me in DC. And after surviving this, Alpo knew that if he really wanted to lock the city down, he needed to have a strong team. And that's where Wayne Perry came into play. Alpo knew with his drug connections and the money and Wayne's reputation and the team of killers that he had behind him, they could have the city on lock. But one thing that Alpo learned during his time in the streets of DC is that they only respected killers. So him and Wayne was gonna have to put the murder game all the way down and strike fear into the district. So that old saying, when in Rome, when in Rome, do what the Romans do. So I, I quickly seen that this was a place that I could make a lot of money, but now I got to put my game down. I got to put it down. Although I wasn't trying to bring it down there, but to survive, you had to do it and you got to let it be known that you put it down like that because that's the only thing they respect. They ain't gonna respect a brother trying to just be slow and get money. You got to put the murder game down. Alpo and Wayne assembled a team of killers. They had people like Big Head Gary, who was a hustler, but also known to kill. A man by the name of Michael Jackson, who was once in the crew of Michael Frey Salters, a legendary drug dealer out of DC, who was set up by Alpo and Wayne and killed by Michael Jackson in a Ooh, double cross. And he joined <clears throat> Alpo's crew. Matter of fact, Alpo told a story the one day they was out seeing a dude moving to work in their territory. And as they was driving by the dude, Michael Jackson whistled and the dude turned around to look. And when he did, Michael Jackson said bye-bye and blasted him. They also had a teenage killer by the name of Sheldon Watkins, AKA Shorty Pop, who was once a part of the legendary go-go group, the Junkyard Band who was signed to Def Jam in the 80s, but he decided to put the drums and the mic down and picked up assault rifles and became a certified killer. And of course, 
They had the Michael Jordan of murder, God, Wayne Silk Perry. Poe had the money and the coke. Wayne had the power. These his new friends. If you want to get something from Alpo, you best to pay it back. Because if not, Wayne is going to handle it. Ain't no freebies, ain't all that nice shit stopping. Wayne's M.O. was more so than fuck that nigga, let's get rid of him. If you wasn't on 18, then watch out. Because if you had something they wanted, they was coming and get it. Wayne would teach his young killers the ins and outs of murder, how to use their weapon properly, cleaning the gun, proper aim, how to set up your target to make the hit as easy as possible. He had his own army of killers. And Wayne, he was the general, and he would make his young soldiers prove themselves too. It's a story of a woman by the name of Evelyn Carter who had allegedly witnessed another murder that Wayne had committed, and he felt like she was cooperating with the police, so he wanted her dead, and he gave the hit to one of his youngins. They caught her leaving a Keep Sweat concert at Constitution Hall. He shot her twice in the chest, and he was pretty sure that she was dead. He ran back to Wayne, told him that it was done, and Wayne asked him, like, hey, man, where did you shoot her at? You know she dead? He like, yeah, she dead. I shot her twice in the chest. And Wayne, he went crazy. As they say, 